Okay guys, uh, we have another another little project coming up here today. Um, I think I showed you this before. It's our cooling tower, of course. And um, this is our makeup water for the for the basin, for the spray pump. It takes water from the bottom of the tower. This pump moves it up through spray nozzles that spray over this coil in the closed loop which cools the water for the condensers on uh, water source heat pumps. Okay. And uh, a while ago I replaced this solenoid valve because it uh, physically had a, a chunk missing out of it and it was bypassing water. So we replaced that. And um, But after we did that we discovered that this the water level controller which is like basically electronic probes that sit down in the tower and open and close that solenoid valve if necessary. Uh, it's no, uh, it's no good. After I replaced that, I found that problem. So, uh, and it's been like this for a while. I just wired it up with a time switch uh, for when I'm not here. I uh, shut it off manually when I am here and cycle it. Um, yeah, I had had to do this for weekends and other times when I'm not here. So this is bullshit, though, of course. And so now over here we have the solution. Right there is the drain fitting for the tower. So we're going to tee off of there with an isolation valve. We're also have another valve over there. We're going to replace this the tower drain because it's no good. Anyway, so we're going to tee off of there, connect that to there as normal. We got the short nipple here, there's a two inch isolation valve, close nipple there, elbow pushing, one inch you need to take the tank off we need to, and it's a one inch insert into the left hand thread on this little bung adapter or whatever. Well, anyway, so that's going to mimic the water level in the tower. We're going to reproduce that right here. And we're going to have the same level in this tank as whatever's in the tower. Over here is the lid for that tank. Oh, I gotta take that. Uh, anyways, this is an electric. No move is a level sensor with no no moving parts, um, and, the, and the brain of it is not sitting inside the cooling tower where it's all permissive. And so, we put that lid on top of the room. And what do we have here? But a a uh, shiny new control panel from our friends at RSD. Um, probably about the most basic panel you could get. Um, but you know it's got uh, low level, high level relays in there. Uh, and this is a D uh, DC powered by DC voltage. So we take our, our 120 volts in and then we are uh, we have 20, is a 24 volt uh, direct current output. So these are 24 volt relays direct current relays and uh, I, haven't, I haven't looked at the wiring diagram yet but basically one of them is going to one's a high level one's a low level and then uh, let's see we got valve we got high alarm low alarm valve control on and valve control off so pretty pretty darn simple so uh, let's just do an overview from right now I need a few more parts to mount this panel. Um, figure the best thing is just going to be to put two pieces of Unistrat here, Unistrat, Unistrat, and then just bolt it, bolt it in. It'd be nice and nice and pretty. Put it right here, everybody can get to it, and that'll be that. So it's kind of a cool little project. Uh, I've been wasting some water for a bit of time here, so this is a good upgrade and. Um, will last a hell of a lot longer and, and be a lot more precise than just a, a ball valve, a, you know, a float valve or whatever. So, so this is a pretty, pretty cool solution. So, I thought so anyways. So, we'll, uh, I'll show you, show you a little bit more when we get, get going on. Okay, friends, we have our uh, panel mounted now. Some units right. Uh, 
bolts that came with it were really short. Uh, I had to get some longer ones. No big deal. One in every corner. Got uh, the lock washer on the back. Anyways, so uh, we will get to it. Next thing I'm going to be getting uh, the tank plumbed in, I think. So we can do the electrical. Uh, the electrical is going to be really simple. I'm just going to punch. Uh, I guess we'll have to step drill it. I don't have my knockout punch yet. Um, we'll punch a half inch hole over here for the 120 volts. Um, we'll line in. And punch another one on the side here to go looking for one. Couldn't be any simpler. So, please fill it up. Oh, this is a pain in the ass to do with the um, S. Uh, I didn't have time to shut off the building or anything, obviously, so. <laughs> so there was a lot of water here a minute ago, but uh, we got, we're all good now. Everything's tight, leak free. Oops. Except for that, of course. <sighs> you know, this is such a nice looking job except for this. I don't really don't like this, but that's what I was given to work with, so I can't complain too much. But as you can see, there we go. Our uh, water level is equalized. <laughs> so there we go. Well, uh, said I just got to wire in those two little things, and there's our level, new level controller. What do you know? All right. Well, uh, I'll show you a little more after we get it wired up, and uh, we'll show you maybe get to show you a cycle or two, and get rid of this monstrosity. Okay, friends. Uh, day two here. <coughs> Got our um, tapped into high voltage from this box, um, which is this red wire here. Uh, neutral, obviously white. Um, uh, anyways, so we got hot and neutral going up into here. And then there is a let's see, black is black is in there. Black is in there. Uh, anyways, um the same wire that opens this solenoid valve energizes it from here um, also heats up this outlet which is connected to our chemical dosing pump so whenever we're bleeding we're feeding of course that's the way it works um, so pretty simple so I just tapped into hot and neutral here and uh, and got the ground lug on there and brought it into our little NEMA block here. Hot, neutral, and ground. So there's our 120 volts in. And then uh, uh, off of relay three is what opens our valve. That red wire there on the right comes down around here. And then you see S1 and S2. S2 is just neutral. So I'm going to connect one side of the, sol the fill valve solenoid to there, and then um, the, this red wire is S1, so it, it gives it 120 volts when relay 3 uh, closes, or when that uh, set of contacts on that relay closes, I should say. So pretty darn simple, couldn't really get a whole lot simpler. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. Uh, it's about time to go home. Uh, tomorrow, I just have to 
they just got the spikes hanging out over here. Just gonna take this this existing tail off of here, plug it right there with the screw plug in there. Just take this whip off and then just run from our control panel straight over to here, bypass the loop out. Yeah, if I was feeling real perky, I might uh, just make this a, a full elbow and get rid of that T box there, but I don't know. I don't know about that. I think the plug on that end will be just as nice. You don't have to mess with anything. So, that's it for now. Okay, friends, uh, we're all done here with this, uh, this guy. Uh, well, mostly done here. Uh, but I'll explain, explain what's going on. We have our uh, high voltage power going in here, 120 volts. Tied in the panel here. <coughs> this uh, uh, level sensing unit, whatever you want to call it, it's, uh, it's a transmitter sending a signal down to the bottom of the tank to detect the port of the water level and other, see where it's at. And our uh, solenoid valve, our makeup valve, is 140, and that's the conduit going to there. And so high voltage over here, and then S1, S2, that's the line of neutral on our uh, on our valve. So uh, R3 opens that valve, and here's our parameters. High alarm, uh, yeah, there's a, and the alarm is just a little light on here. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really make that much sense. The tank's see-through. I'm going to come out here and see it's either high or low. It's a highly designed panel. Whatever. Um, so our high alarm is at 33 and a half inches. Our solenoid valve shuts off and stops filling the tower at 32. It's just, just below there, so that's nice and full. And the valve comes back on at 30. So it's going to keep it between here and here unless something goes wrong. And then we have our low low level alarm down here. Um, so that's that. Well, the only thing I have to do now, um, I'm going to repipe this. I did this real quick. Um, manager was getting on me and uh, wanted to see some results, even though I didn't have I didn't have this. This is a custom order. This brass T didn't have it yet. He wanted to see something, so I uh, slapped together with galvanized for now. But uh, as you know. That is not cool. That brass and galvanized together, it'll eventually uh, corrode away. Uh, so things happen. So we're gonna repipe that. Uh, but other than that, is uh, we're good to go. I'll put my little uh, little covers back on there, and that is a. Uh, that is your uh, cooling tower water level controller taken up to the 21st century. And now we can uh, maintain proper chemical level in our uh, in our tower basin too. So it won't be draining city water in all the time, in and out. All right, another little thing I just noticed here. That's a galvanized nipple going under brass. That's been there for a long time. I didn't put it there, but we're going to go ahead and place that brass. We made this all proper. So, why not make everything proper? I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. So. Okay. It wasn't so hard, was it? A little brass in This is a discharge off the spray pump. And this is where it, uh, for the chemical feeding, or bleeding rather, um, it just takes it's taking a water sample out of there. When this bleed solenoid open, when the conductivity controller calls for bleed, the solenoid valve opens and then it drains up the drain line. And it's a bypass for whatever reason. I don't know. That's why you did that, but. and uh, we're done with this.
Done, done, done. Gotta clean everything up and uh, smile. Thanks for watching. Oh, before I go, look at that. The electrolysis. Nasty. Don't put galvanizing brass together, kids. Anything with galvanized. Just galvanized and galvanized only, pretty much.